Hey everybody, welcome to the Fire It Up with CJ show. I am just so, I don't know, sparkly is the right word. I'm so excited because Lama Surya Das is here, who's like one of my all, all time favorite people. Um, I actually said I was trembling because I'm just so excited to talk to you. <laughs> so welcome Lama Surya Das. Thank you, CJ. Uh... It's been nice to see you. I'm trembling too. <laughs> You're probably just picking up my energy. <laughs> yes, no, I'm, I'm feeling with you. I'm resonating. Okay. Um, all right. So over this last, um, you had asked when we were starting the show what my last, um, how my COVID time has been. And um, what has become clear to me is that part of what I'm trying to do is um, reduce my own suffering and help other people reduce their own suffering as well. And, you know, it's come in just such weird manifestations for me from physical ailments. Like last year, around the same time, my whole body was numb and I had no idea what was going on. And it continues. And now I'm just sort of used to having these anomalous body issues and they're not, uh, they're not doctor worthy. They're energetic. You know, I need to like a spiritual doctor really <laughs> help me out. So it's all, it's been about that. It's about crying sometimes in meditation and not even knowing what I'm crying about because I don't have any personal content, but I'm feeling the pain in the world and the suffering in the world. And, um, and there's this inner knowing that there's something in this Bodhisattva path for me. Um, but I frankly, um, I don't have any cognitive understanding about what it means to be a Bodhisattva. Um, I talked to one person who's like, you're never going to be a Bodhisattva. And I was like, really? Why? And he's like, oh, you're not at that level. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> so I guess I can't. Achieve. Thanks a lot. Very helpful. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> so I'm not sure where I am. So I can't, I don't know if I, I'm, I'm, I'm aspiring you're Bodhisattva. That level. So you're at that level, but let's circle back to that. Go on. Yeah. So, so, um, so, uh, not to make this a therapy session, but what should I do? <laughs> well, I'll tell you. No problem. <laughs> so let's start from the beginning. Well, uh, yes. What is a bodhisattva? What is it? You wrote this book. Buddha is as Buddha does. Um, tam par paramitas um, for transformation. So I want to use that maybe as a framework, but. Um, what should I do? <laughs> it's very, although this seems hard to, you know, tackle, it's really not. Of course, it's so simple that it's hard to apply or, or even take in. So if you ask the Dalai Lama, and of course he could recite all those scriptures and talk about the 10 Panacean virtues, the paramitas, the transformative practices, the, the Bodhisattva, the altruistic compassionator, the spiritual hero, the the compassionate awakener, the bodhisattva, the Buddha to be, the bodhisattva. Mm -hmm. But he would say, think first of others rather than yourself. Mm. Now, I shouldn't really put words in his mouth, but representing the tradition, he does, I do, you know, not that we're the same level or anything. The bodhisattva is the ideal of our kind of school of Buddhism, Mahayana Buddhism universal enlightenment buddhism not individual enlightenment buddhism mm. the big ship mahayana the great vehicle universal enlightenment buddhism rather than individual enlightenment buddhism not that they're contradictory mm. so the bodhisattva is the spiritual hero of the ideal and the practice of the six or ten perfections or transcendental virtues the paramitas in sanskrit I call panacean virtues. So you practice those. But let's go back to the Bodhisattva cultivates unselfish compassion and altruism. So thus the saying, think more of others than of yourself. Mm. Now that doesn't mean be a codependent doormat, can't say no, be the burnt out healer and all those other things, syndromes that one could fall into. It doesn't mean self abandonment, self-disappearing, self-abnegation. It doesn't mean you have to sit in the back of the bus prejudiced against, you know, oneself. No, the middle way. But not, are we 
following anything like balance and harmony, you know, moderation. No, we're so extreme in our selfishness and fear and violence and anger and greed and, you know, all these admittedly human, let's call them emotions or habits. So thinking of others first is the direct and simplest way to bodhisattvahood. So if you think, you know, that means you have to be a saint, you have to be enlightened before you can be a bodhisattva, no. Like that nincompoop, and I'll, I'll, you know, I don't even know who it is, but I'm going to stick my neck out here and diagnose them. That nincompoop, that's a te- this is a technical term. That nincompoop who said, no, you'll never do that. You're not at that level. The bodhisattva thinks or would give their life up for another. Now, I know that seems like a steep standard. Jesus was a bodhisattva, you know, like a Buddha. Jesus said, if somebody harms you, turn the other cheek. If they take your whatever coat, give him your pants too, whatever he said. But that's the point. So, you know, we can all do that, but it's not easy because we're so selfish, self-oriented. We grow up that way. First, we have to individuate and become someone and take care of ourselves. Then we can take care of others. Mm. So that. You know, not just jumping from be dependent to codependent to like an addict. Mm. Mm. And what is that process of individuation? Because I still, I think I'm still, and, and, and do we do that kind of simultaneously with kind of tuning it? Because for me, it, feel, it feels like I'm still individuating, meaning like, who am I separate from the yes. collective? And then who am I in, 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 one with the collective. I mean, it's this yes. kind of those are good dance. questions. Good, very good questions, CJ. And those are the necessary questions along this way of awakening, of enlightenment, of union, of oneness. You know, oneness doesn't preclude individuation. For example, you have to grow up and be independent ish teenager and young adult so you can move on to realizing interdependence and autonomy. Hmm not just be a reactive, you know, teenager, you're seeking teenage freedom without responsibility. Mm. I want to go wherever I want. Can I borrow the car? And is it full of gas? And did you pay the insurance? You know, that's not independence. That's teenage freedom. (laughs) Or young adults, I may say. (laughs) For us, it's a long path to to, to Ferrari, you know? It's an infinite path. Yes, But yes, we do it at the same time. That was your question. Yeah, so we do it at the same time. And- at the same time, we cultivate empathy and feeling with others and, you know, unselfishness and things like that while we are trying to individuate and find ourselves and know ourselves and find our own voice in the world. Or if we're an artist, you know, stop imitating and find your own voice. And if we're a parent, you know, find your way. There's no classes for that except parenting. You know, you have to find your way. Mm-hmm. So at the same time, you're learning to be a parent. You're also learning how to individuate and find your way as a parent, which might be different than, I don't know if I'm outdated, but, you know, Dr. Spock's way or somebody else's way from mm-hmm. previous decades, the expert, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. or your mother-in-law's way. Mm-hmm. Might be different than one's mother or father, you know. So, but you're responsible. You're in the driver's seat. They may be a better driver, but if they're in the back seat, it doesn't help. You're in the driver's seat. You have to be responsible for the kids first, and then you can take their advice. Yeah, and it's it, I, I guess what's coming up for me is that things are changing so rapidly. And, and for too. my for my son with technology, my son, you know, he's looking for a job, and I'm like, oh, here's what you have to do. He's like. Oh no, you don't really know at all what it's like looking for a job nowadays. That may be. It's all done by a computer. I know. It's, it's like all dating. Me to... It's like <laughs> dating. One of my friends got divorced and asked me for advice because I've been single so much of my life, although I was married too. And I said, I don't know. I know you don't hang out at bars. Maybe you could hang out at like in bookstores and drink coffee and look at books and you'll meet people like you. And he said, You are out of your mind. <laughs> For there are no book bookstores. Store store. It was just so <laughs> funny. He asked the llama for dating advice at my age. Come on. You know, how about llama.com? I don't know. 
Meetlama.com. I don't know. Meet, yeah, you, you know, could go to llama.com and offer outdated yeah. dating yeah. advice. Please no, no, bring the girl flowers, good. open the doors. <laughs> like, who is this llama.com? <laughs> dating wisdom yeah. from, from ancient. And don't ancient. let women, don't let them pay half, you know, yeah. <laughs> man, you're the marble man. Exactly. I mean, it's a little outdated. Anyway, <laughs> what your son said is right. We have to be nimble. You know, we have to, I don't know if stay up to, da- up to date is right, but a little bit mm, let go of our fixed ideas about how we saw it happen. Yeah. Whether yeah, it was hard parenting or, you know, looking for a job. Um, you're young, but, you know, I was looking for my first jobs in the 60s and 70s, so it was a little different then. Yeah. And there were bulletin boards and there were personal ads, not online dating. And it was just meeting people that was also possible. Yeah. And networking. But it's a little different now. Yeah. So and people build their resume and they want to know what kind of platform you have on social media, not, you know, necessarily what jobs you had or what degrees you had. Anyway, yeah. with the Bodhisattva thing, the template or the business plan, if you want to call it for becoming a Bodhisattva, is cultivating unselfishness and compassion and loving kindness in action, mm. developing wisdom and compassion, knowing yourself and knowing how things work in the world. So mm-hmm. wisdom and compassion and action. Wisdom mm-hmm. and skillful means means karma, cause and effect. Mm-hmm. These are the two wings of the bodhisattva. Well, you do. Just had something like that on the web about wisdom and compassion. These are the two wings. The, the bodhisattva can fly to enlightenment. Mm-hmm. And then if you broke that down, there's the six or the ten panacean virtues, the paramitas. And what are they? Well, rather than giving a list, I just want to say, you know, well, the seven or eight major world religions have a very similar morality. So a lot of this is the same as cardinal virtues of Christianity or the Ten Commandments or the Sermon on the Mount. Generosity, moral self-discipline, patient forbearance, energetic effort. mindfulness or concentration the fifth sixth is transcendental wisdom or innate gnosis self-knowledge and i could go on but you get the idea so rather than being overwhelmed and thinking oh you have to be a saint to do these things you just you take on something like practice a little more generosity on giving tuesday Mm -hmm at christmas it's a good time to remember yeah you know a little more ethical self-discipline not just following was lust and desires think before you grab mm. think before you grab the neighbor's mate think before you grab you know the addictive substance think before you grab the midnight snack if that's an issue mm. mindfulness mm. mindfulness remembering yourself and your principles not mm. just being like an animal that just, you know, a dog or a cat, just, a dog just reacts. Mm. Something moves, it chases, even if it's a danger. Mm. Yeah, I had to do that today. I was, I was just about to respond to an email and, um, and, and, and what I'm, what I'm, what this is actually bringing to mind is just constantly reminding yourself of, of your anchor points, you know, because every single person has yeah. a different anchor point and, and I have a business plan, which is my life plan. It's just one and the same. And it has my values and it has like the, you know, questions that I want to be asking myself every time before I actually move to action and kind of my life principles. And I was reading through it now because it's the end of the year. So it's, you know, I'm thinking about, you know, a, a kind of a life review process and how did I do on this and um luckily i'd done that right before i got a triggering email because i thought oh wait a second before flying those fingers start flying and you start responding jerk reaction yes i started knee jerk reacting before you kick my grandmother said (laughs) exactly then it was a highlight before you kick back jeffrey (laughs) exactly it's like highlight delete and they said I need to think about this and then period. And then like <laughs> send the message. It's uh, 
that pause before we react so that we can think, okay, what is it that you really are feeling? So, and I like the idea of, it's not the idea of unselfish compassion. So it's not about, oh, you know, I don't necessarily want to work with this partner because of blah, blah, blah. It's like, or like, oh, I'll just deal with it. I'll just deal with it and be the selfless one. You know, I was just reading through as all the notes. I'm like, so how can I guide myself through my own words that I wrote a year ago and say, so now what, if these are your guiding principles, how can you respond from that anchored place versus kind of like off the cuff ego, kind of. Well, I think there's a difference between react and respond. At least let's define it that way. So rather than having a blind knee jerk reaction to stimuli of any kind, think before you act everybody can say but how do you do that so we train like in mindful anger management or something creating that sacred pause between stimulus and action so you can choose how when and if to respond maybe you respond later maybe you don't answer every email that stirs you up in that day you answer it the next day maybe even somebody shouts at you or cuts you off in traffic you think before you ram them with your road rage car you know, maybe it's not in your best interest, not just theirs to ram them. Yeah. Well, I had, I had some, I, 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 word. You, know, you know what, it's not really retaliation in kind, you know, to yeah. ram them with their car. You don't know if they have a kid or ancient elder in the, in the passenger's back seat. You don't know what the consequences are. So think before you act is easy to understand, but how? We have to train our mind a little. We call this attitude transformation or mind training in Tibetan. Breathe and create a sacred pause between stimulus and reaction. So you have time to respond, not just to react. Mm. And then maybe you respond later by painting Guernica or some great you know, piece of art, something constructive to get your yayas out, your emotions. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, Picasso painted that because the town of Guernica in Spain was bombed to, to the living daylights out of it by the Nazi Luftwaffe in the 1930s. That's actually one of my favorite paintings. Shooting people, he painted a world, you know, important anti-war statement. Mm. He could count his energy, his anger, his sadness, his grief, his everything into constructive rather than destructive Mm. response. Mm. So that's a caricature, a big example of our daily life. And, Mm. you know, if you let yourself blindly react, you can do a lot of damage in the long run if you don't think about the consequences first. Like, if I don't know, I don't smoke, but you know, people smoke cigarettes in the car and they flip the butt out. That's how you burn down an old growth forest. Mm. Mindless moment of a tiny butt that's you know the size of a fingertip can burn down a whole old growth forest, or mm. for that matter, a town mm. and all the beings in it. So that's the way we go through life, unless we are mindful, reflective, like you're thinking about the end of the year. So your business plan for life, your values, your center, your anchor principles. So it's a good time to do that. You're a thoughtful person, CJ. So it's good to do that at the end of the year. That's why people talk about New Year's resolutions. I know usually we don't keep our, all our resolutions, but it's good to be thoughtful and you know look at our intentions and motivations. Mm-hmm. and refine them and retool them and do a little course correction if that's needed mm-hmm. and not just keep going in the deeper rut we'll I like all right so on january 5th you're going to be um coming to east west bookstore which is our seattle bucks our beloved seattle bookstore um on january 5th coming and talking so um any any virtually virtually so go to eastwestbookshop.com and sign up for the event. And the, can people find it on your website too? Yes. Okay, excellent. On my Which website, is... www.surya.org. Got, got it. Thank you so much. And I look forward to seeing you all. I love the Pacific Northwest where the green Buddha lives. We love you too. <laughs>